Markets continue their sell-off today with the S&P down 0.83%, closing at 66.1732. The major indices continue trading below some of the shorter-term moving averages that we like to track and have also been in negative gamma exposure territory over the past several trading sessions. You can see on our chart here, most of the gamma exposure is currently situated at the 6700 strike, even though there is a very wide dispersion of gamma exposure, basically between 6500 and 7000 thousand on the high end. And if we zoom out to the daily candlestick chart, we are still in this very important zone, our lower dealer cluster zone, which is hovering around the 6,600 level. This is also an area where price has seen a big inflection point going back to the beginning of September. So entering this area once again, basically over the last several trading sessions on this pullback. On the daily candlestick chart, we've now seen a couple of closes below the 50-day EMA. The 50-day EMA currently sitting at 6,680. 425. That's this red line that you see on our chart. That's been holding ever since early May where price got above the 50-day EMA and has been holding this trend ever since then. So we are definitely now on the bottom range of this trend. Bulls definitely want to see buyers stepping up here in the next day or two. We have OPEX coming up this Friday, the monthly OPEX for November. Typically, these OPEX weeks tend to have a historically bullish bias. We'll see if that occurs here over the next three trading sessions. But if there is a breakdown below these levels here, as we've been talking about in the past several YouTube videos, 6,000 is a potential target on the downside. The gamma exposure uh, and the open interest at 6,000 go all the way back to the May timeframe. That's been sitting there this entire time as price has been trading up to these higher levels. As I mentioned, this is our lower dealer cluster zone. This is an area where oftentimes we see all the put buyers that have come in are at these levels where they start closing out their positions, forcing dealers to simultaneously close out those short short puts on their end and also buying back their short positions as a hedge. So in this case, you know, shorting S&P futures or shorting the SPY ETF in order to hedge those short SPX put options. So it is possible that we could have seen the beginning of that today here around the 6600 strike. We did see some buying pressure step in this morning uh, as price dipped below that 6600 level. You can see not a lot of gamma exposure below 6500. And so if this is put buyers closing out their puts and not rolling down the chain down here to 6500 or lower, this could provide some buying pressure in addition to other buyers stepping in in the market. Thanks, Anthony. Let's look at QQQ. And uh, we've been noting different things that we were watching this week. Number one being the opening this week of QQQ below the nine period SMA on the weekly chart. Uh, and that's a significant break. You can see that we haven't closed below the nine period SMA uh, really since April 13. You'd have to go back to the lows from the spring. The other thing that we've noted was the importance of the GEX cluster at 600. And really, it's two GEX clusters. It's the positive and negative GEX, uh, mostly negative uh, at the 600 strike. We've closed below that at 596.31. The close below 600 does open the door to these next largest negative GEX clusters that we see both at 590 and all the way down to uh, 580. Uh, 580 happens to coincide with the middle weekly Keltner channel here. So how likely is a rebound from this point? I do notice that we are uh, quite far extended below the whole moving average and the nine period SMA on the daily chart. So it is entirely possible that even if we maintain a downtrend going forward, we could see a bounce back above 600, uh, maybe toward the 610 area on QQQ uh, before the next decision is made. So the burden is on the side of the bulls right now to prove that the uptrend can be resumed back toward these GEX clusters at 640 and 650 also corresponding with this upper daily Keltner channel. Thanks, Sean. Next, let's take a look at CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike was down 3.04% today, closing at 513.67. If we zoom in here to the chart, basically over the last month, we can see CrowdStrike uh, primarily trading between the 550 and the 500 level. And in fact, gamma exposure is mostly still concentrated between these major strikes. Overall, CrowdStrike has been in a decent uptrend ever since middle of September. 
September. You can see holding the 50-day EMA, while a lot of other tech names have been failing below their 50-day EMA, CrowdStrike is, is one of the stronger names that's been holding above that level. And we've actually been trading an iron condor strategy on CrowdStrike. We actually closed out our existing position today, locking in $498 profit on that iron condor. We were playing uh, the spread between the 500 and 545 strikes right in that zone that we were just pointing out. And so even though we exited that position today, we noted in our Discord post that we still like that 500 to 550 range and will likely re-enter a very similar position targeting the December OPEX. So that's the December 19th expiration. And coming back here to our current chart, you can see most of the GAM exposure still mostly concentrated between that 500 and 550 level. And so there is a wide dispersion of GAM exposure, but the bulk of it is still in the zone. We think this uptrend can maintain basically just slowly grinding higher over the next few weeks. But in general, we think this iron condor strategy has been really effective, especially in a lot of these large mega cap tech names that are still holding up really well during this market pullback. And so the trajectory is still up and to the right, but maybe as a slow grind higher. And an iron condor actually does really well in those type of environments. By the way, if you want to track our trades in real time as we manage our options portfolio, you can become a member at geeksoffinance.com. You can also get a sneak peek of what we're trading right now by checking out our community Discord absolutely free. I'll put links in the description below to both of those so you guys can check it out. Thanks, Anthony. Uh, we're headed into the monthly VIX options expiring in the morning pre-market. So let's take a quick look at the VIX. Very large positive GEC cluster at 25. And I think at least market bulls have some degree of hope in that uh, the VIX attempted to exceed this 25 GEX cluster and rejected uh, this morning, actually. And we closed just below that. So we've been looking for the VIX to be between the 21 strike and 25 this week. Uh, it looks like so far it's fitting perfectly within those boundaries, but I would not be surprised at all if we saw the market attempt some sort of rebound here in the second half of the week, especially, you know, we noted the distance between QQQ and the whole moving average on the daily chart. Well, the inverse is true of uh, the VIX. We have the same distance between the moving average and the VIX, but the, in this case, it's to the upside. And so we could definitely see this gap closed. Perhaps the VIX moves back down toward the 20 to 21 area. Uh, and that gives the market a chance to rebound. The big question is what comes after some sort of a bounce in the market? Do we continue lower or will we see those previous higher targets as we head into year end? All right, next let's take a look at Micron. Micron down a big 5.56% today, closing at 228.50. This is another name that we've been trading a premium collection strategy on over the last couple of weeks. We've had on an iron butterfly between the 240 and 200 strike targeting this 220 level. And you can see over the last couple of weeks, Micron has continued grinding higher despite a pickup in volatility in the daily candles. With today's pullback, we're right back into our overall zone and actually in a, a nicely profitable position. The gamma exposure structure uh, has shifted higher over the last several weeks, mostly now between uh, the 230 and the 250 level. And the majority of the options volume today also uh, between that 240 and 250 level as well. And so because we do have a slight profit on those iron butterflies, we'll likely try to lock in those gains tomorrow morning and roll up the options chain. That's one of the nice things about monitoring gamma exposure data in real time. As market participants adjust and change their positioning, you can get a sense of where the trajectory of price is likely to be. You can also see, you know, just in general, Micron has been in a very steep uptrend. Only in the last week or two has it really started to cap off here, hitting resistance just above this 250 level. And so we still like a premium collection strategy on Micron, you know, with the thought that it's more likely to be basically consolidate within this major range rather than seeing another significant leg higher. We think the probabilities are that uh, price really just consolidates, grinds higher, continuing in the uptrend, maybe just a little bit slower towards that 250 strike over the next several weeks. And so we still like an, either an iron butterfly or an iron condor 
you know, around these major gamma exposure concentrations, collecting premium over the next several weeks as price potentially consolidates in this range. All right, let's take a look at the small caps. Uh, IWM actually closing positive today, which I think is a divergence worth noting. Yesterday, we noted that the GEX intensity gauge comparing uh, IWM GEX to prior readings over the last year was at an extreme. And it's still pretty much at an extreme despite improving very slightly. Let's flip over to a picture of the chart next to GEX. And you can see that uh, we are actually pretty close to this lower dealer cluster zone, which is at 230. Uh, today's low is 230.96. Uh, we do see volume at 210 and 220. The lower daily Kellner channel is at 223. So right now, the odds appear to be tilted toward 225 to 230, holding this decline. We will adjust that view if we start to see GEX shifting lower, as we just mentioned. In terms of the upside, if we do see a bounce in the next couple of days, like we mentioned as being possible, I would expect 240 to mount some sort of an effort at resistance. So we do want to watch what happens at 240 if we see a rally take us there by the end of the week. And guys, you can get full access to our gamma exposure dashboard, our option flow analytics tools, as well as our algorithmic trading strategies by becoming a member at geeksoffinance.com. Members also get access to the premium channels in our community discord. We've got a ton of great traders in there sharing their own trade setups and strategies. And you can also track our trades in real time as we manage our options portfolio. It's a great resource, so you definitely want to check it out. I'll put links in the description below to all of that so you guys can take a look. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.